On July 25th, Abdu'l-Baha arrived at Agnes Parsons' Dublin, New Hampshire estate. During three weeks there, he gave private and small group talks and wrote letters to send all over the world. There he was able to rest, walk in the woods, shop, and cook for his friends. Mr. Parsons had a carriage and took Abdu'l-Baha for rides around beautiful Dublin Lake and through the countryside. Though he stayed with his entourage at the Parsons House Dayspring, He moved to the Dublin Inn for part of his time to get more rest. Visitors arrived from Portland, Oregon, Washington, D.C., Boston, Cambridge, New York, and New Jersey. Abdu'l-Baha went to the Harrisville train station to greet them. W. W. Harmon, a leader of the Theosophists in Boston, visited. As I look back upon that time, I see him in that most majestic and sublime attitude with which those who are nearest to him are so often impressed. It's almost supernatural power. One has to feel it and see it in order to understand the fullness and completeness of his majesty. Abdu'l-Baha toured a summer camp for boys in the nearby village of Chesham with Dr. Charles Hanford Henderson, the owner and director, who told Abdu'l-Baha that his was the first summer camp in the United States. Abdu'l-Baha spoke to the boys, and they performed gymnastics for him. Aware of class and race distinctions in Dublin, Abdu'l-Baha arranged for African-American servants to meet at the Parsons' boathouse. 28 attended, and Abdu'l-Baha addressed them on unity and amity between blacks and whites. Mahmoud noted. He spoke of the approaching wedding of Miss Matthew, a white woman, and Mr. Gregory, a black man, which is to take place shortly. This meeting was full of joy. Abdu'l-Baha spoke at the Parsons' home every afternoon to audiences as large as 75. Among those who met Abdu'l-Baha in Dublin included artist Joseph Lyndon Smith, Abbot Thayer, and George DeForest Brush, who hosted Abdu'l-Baha for lunch and later became a Baha'i. Others who met him included Franklin McVeigh, United States Secretary of the Treasury under President Taft, and Professor Raphael Pompelli, an American geologist, explorer, and Harvard professor, whose home Abdu'l-Baha visited. Pompelli's daughter, photographer Elise Pompelli Cabot, took the Dublin pictures of Abdu'l-Baha. Abdu'l-Baha's only public talk in Dublin was at the Unitarian Church, filled to its capacity of 300. Built in 1852, the church also served as the town meeting house. Abdu'l-Baha paced back and forth on the platform as he spoke. Reverend Howard Colby Ives described his gestures. Never a dogmatic downward stroke of the hand, never an upraised warning finger, never the assumption of teacher to the taught, but always the encouraging upward swing of hands as though he would actually lift us up with them. And his voice, like a resonant bell of finest timber, never loud, but of such penetrating quality that the walls of the room seemed to vibrate with its music. Agnes Parsons said, The people were motionless. So great was the power of his word. I had never seen him look as he did, nor had I ever been so impressed. Abdu'l-Baha's 50-minute address focused on true education, spiritual power, and Baha'u'llah's teachings. He chanted a prayer. Mahmoud noted, A wonderful spirit of humility seemed to permeate the building, and the voice of acceptance seemed to issue from all sides. Before leaving Dublin, he attended a play, then called on various people to say goodbye. Agnes hosted a musical performance where he spoke about the spiritual power of music. 
and during the afternoon talk, there was standing room only. On his last evening in Dublin, at the Pompelli home, a large group gathered for dinner. They exchanged funny stories. Abdu'l-Bahá told several, saying that such stories made the difficulties easier when his family was in prison.